All right, guys, so I'm going to take you on a little behind the scenes of what's going on in design for the Huga. And we're out here. It's starting to get dark, but we're going to do it. It's going to be fun. Seth, what do you think? <laughs> <laughs> I don't I don't quite have the best desk setup. So oh, Seth this volunteered. is the best bench you've ever had. <laughs> Right when you walk in the door, the first thing is going to be this really awesome valley that happens in the roof pitch that is just super unique. And it was interesting trying to find a light for it, but forever I've envisioned this one particular light. It's from an artist um, named Louis Polson. And you'll see this light a ton in like Scandinavian design. And it's not a cheap light, so Seth probably won't be happy about it, but it is like a big staple for me. I think I say that a lot. Statement. <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> so um, this light I think will be really, I don't know, awesome for when you come in the front door. It sets the tone for the house and the Scandinavian vibe that we're going for. And it's called a PH5 pendant by Lewis Poulsen. And I'm gonna show you guys, here is the light. I'm going all white. You'll notice in the home, there's gonna be a ton of white, bright, open, airy, just simple, um, clean palette with a lot of neutral and natural tones, which is a lot, again, of that Scandinavian vibe that you're gonna get throughout this home. So that is the first thing that I'm really excited about. And moving from there, as you go through, off to the left will be our kitchen. And in our kitchen, I think I've mentioned we're using a local guy in Cleveland who is making our cabinets. And I'm gonna show you this inspiration for cabinets that I had. They're this like micro shaker, really pretty brown cabinet. And it's just like two panels for the lowers and it's not your traditional one panel that swings open with a drawer. So it's very clean lines, very simple. Super excited for him to make those for us. I also paired it and thought I need to have a slab, like a single slab of granite or quartzite or something behind it. I don't want tile or busyness. I'll show you a picture of that here. Seth again will tell you he's not too thrilled at my choice on this. <laughs> it kind of is though, like there are too many things that I think are important to, that go into this design. And this quartzite I think is beautiful and it's going to look so amazing behind that real pretty rich honey cabinet with the micro shaker. And in Scandinavian design, you've got your, you know, clean, simple whites mixed with like your warm, natural woods mixed with like a little bit of that like grit with the concrete and pops of black or a color here or there. But again, very simple, very chic and minimal. So I think it's gonna be awesome. Moving on from the kitchen, I wanna show you the living room and peeks of what's happening in the living room. You'll notice I have this little peep of the kitchen off to the corner here that shows you that like single slab with a chrome fixture in the micro shaker cabinet. Around the corner from the kitchen will be this black CB2 hutch. There's no TV in the house, FYI. It's just going to be a projector that has, you know, the screen that pulls down over those big glass windows. So it'll either be here in this hutch or it's going to be over in this credenza that's going to be on the opposite um, side of the living room space. So behind that credenza is going to be this raw corrugated metal in the home that is interior shipping container wall. So anytime there are spots where the containers come together and you don't have to do insulation or drywall, I'm always leaving that corrugated wall exposed because it's beautiful. It's like this way of bringing this raw feature of shipping containers into the home. And I think it's gorgeous. It's so fun to work with. And this canyon dust color that you see above my credenza here in this mood board will be the color that we put on that wall only. And again, everything else is that black and white and neutral. And I think this canyon desk will be beautiful with it. The 
couch we picked. I don't know that I've told Seth this either, but it's white. Um, probably not the smartest choice for a rental, but okay, so, but I did do my homework and we made sure that the thread counts and like the spill proof, the spill resistant. Yeah. You know people are gonna rent this. Hi. Um, so don't spill anything on this guys, you but it is, it is, <laughs> a, it is a tough, <laughs> You're done. You know people. You know people are gonna rent this, right? Um, it's a really tough material. It is. It got... cost as, as if it were plated in gold, and gold's really tough. Can I finish? So maybe the white, sensitive, soft fabric will be really tough and durable. No. <laughs> Woo! But this couch is gorgeous, and it's a sectional to fill up a lot of space. The couch, though, it it is tough. It's got a good. Um, fabric on it that's going to be stain resistant, rub resistant, and we'll, we'll have faith in all of our wonderful guests that stay to take care of it. So the bathroom in the lower level is going to be ADA accessible. And for some reason, when I first thought of that, I was, you know, thinking, oh man, like, how do you work around you know, having like a geriatric shower is what they call them, where you're, there's no ledge on the floor and you have to flow it all together. And then I was like, you know what, that might be really cool if you could pull in concrete, because concrete is very smooth, it can go at a slope. Um, so what about a concrete look to achieve that? And then it won't feel like very broken up with, again, tons of tile. And I think that's what keeps coming to mind when we're doing the Scandinavian design and trying to be simple is, I don't want a ton of tile, I don't want a ton of grout lines. So we found a guy that's going to work with us, also out of Cleveland. Cleveland pulling through big time on this project for us, and we're so excited to work with so many awesome people. The floor is going to be like a gray natural concrete all over, and then up the walls through the shower, it's gonna be a white concrete which will just, I think, look so beautiful and contrast with um, that gray on the floor, but keep it bright and airy on the top. I don't want another texture, or another, you know, chunky thing in this very simple, clean bathroom. So I found this website called The French Vikings, and here's a picture of this concrete, again, sink basin, very, very simple and it's going to sit on a natural wood floating vanity, again, because we need to be ADA accessible, so you, you can't have a clunky vanity. Um, the ADA, the wheelchairs, have to be able to roll up underneath if they need to, so that limited us to what types of vanities we could have. So again, I was thinking too much concrete to have like an, yet another huge concrete piece but I wanted something more than just, you know, a basic vanity. So here we are with this like wood vanity top, and then it's going to have this beautiful, it's called coral, is the color of the concrete basin from the French Vikings we're gonna use in that bathroom. So each bedroom, as I mentioned, is very small, just like the OG. So when you walk in, there's actually gonna be like this little wardrobe area off to the right on each of them, which we didn't have before. I think it'll be super nice for throwing in your suitcase, hanging up a few articles of clothing. Um, that's the first little nook that is new to us in this build, but it's gonna be fun. But moving past that, the rest of the room, you basically have a partition wall off of that wardrobe area. A partition wall and then the rest of the room. And if you look here at my sketches, I'm gonna show you kind of the idea for each of the partition walls. So for one of the bedrooms, don't mind my scribbles, I've changed my thoughts a million times, but on one of the bedrooms, there's going to be this faux headboard bump out. And if you recall seeing something similar I've done at the Boho, we also had this little build out that's right above the bed. It's like a headboard almost, but it's built into the drywall. That is going to be in one of the bedrooms. And then I'm gonna put two sconces on either side as reading lamps. I'm getting rid of these danglies. I just decided to do the sconces instead to keep it simple. That way you can lean a piece of art or two, a trinket or so, 
And then there will be a center pendant in the room for central lighting as well. And the another bedroom, number two, we are going to keep it very simple. Um, this is gonna have some sort of a color blocking. So it's not an actual build out of any sort. It's again, just like a paint color that will be different here. I might pull that Canyon dust color that we saw in the living room, or I might go with something different. Um, I originally thought that I was gonna do two pendants hanging on either side. I think I've opted for just one. So you'll see one pendant in this room coming down and again, a central light. And bedroom number three, you can tell I've had a lot of thoughts going on on this one. So I'm gonna articulate the best I can. This bedroom is actually gonna look nothing like this. These little lines going up is the best I can tell you. I'm gonna actually drag you over to my computer screen too. This weird triangular piece that you see is wood and there's going to be wood accents on that entire partition wall that goes from the bottom to the ceiling and then pars onto the ceiling and tapers off into this triangular shape on the ceiling. And then on either side of the bed, there'll be a sconce that hangs with that wood cladding that goes up and over the, onto the ceiling. It's gonna be really cool. Um, that's not what's drawn here, but when I saw that design at, in some fashion online, I was like, yeah, we've gotta do that and incorporate that. So I nixed a lot of this, put some lines up there. I might be using this sort of a three-tiered flush, semi-flush mount and the center of the room to give some dimension. And again, I always like to have a center light in every room. I just think you can't have enough light no matter what. They're always dimmable, but you just don't wanna be feeling like it's too dark or claustrophobic when, you know, you want, everyone needs good proper lighting. And bedroom number four. Bedroom number four is exciting. Um, I also pulled in another sort of trick that I used in the boho which would be this little niche. It's like a four inch bump in box that recesses into the wall. And um, I think it just creates a dimension right above the headboard, right above the pillows, have a little single light coming down and then your central light in the room. And this little niche is again, just a spot to put your knickknacks and maybe rest a phone, but I just love that it added dimension to that partition wall and kept these bedrooms uniquely their own. Last but not least is bedroom number five. This is the large window in the front of the home that you see as you drive up to the Huga. And originally when I drew this, I envisioned this window hitting right at the headboard or where your pillows would land with a sconce and then a central moon glow pendant in the room. This window actually goes clear to the ground in that room. So much to my surprise, when I saw it in real life, I was like, okay, that's obviously not gonna be a spot for a bed because it lets in so much beautiful natural light. And to put a bed in front of that just seemed totally wrong. Headboard or like right your pillow. In front of that ending where that bottom of the window is. Figure out where to put the bed we can move. somehow over here. We are not putting the bed in front of that window, but the room that has that window, I will still use the moon glow pendant and I will still push the bed. We've created a partition wall very similar to the others. So I will push the bed up against the partition when you walk into the room. Across from the bed will be this beautiful um, very obtuse triangular window, and then this moon glow pendant that comes down. So all in all, I think the bedrooms are coming together uniquely on their own. Not exactly how I planned um, in some ways, but I'm, you know, making changes, trying to keep cost in mind where I can so stuff doesn't get too mad at me. Um, <laughs> so keeping it simple, omitting things where needed, shifting the beds if needed, 
Um, we are omitting a few lights, just a few. Needless to say, I'm excited about all of the things that we're doing and putting together for this home. It's really starting to get exciting getting to this phase where, you know, the ordering's taking place. We're getting down to the nitty gritty. As I mentioned um, recently, like things for the house are getting bought and filled up. So putting a bow on this really soon and finally can take you guys through a walkthrough to see that once it's fully done and completed and you can see it in real life. But till then, we're just gonna keep working, getting this done so we can show you guys. You can watch our story the boho the OG, too much to handle. Like and subscribe to this video. Leave me a comment if you think this song sucks, I can handle it. For now I'll just go. Thank you.